remember this a conscious thought. This shit isn't working for me anymore. I need to find something stronger. Yeah, at 18, I found an old friend that I knew used to um, use heroin intravenously. At that time, it was speed. Uh, and immediately I was like, this is, this is everything. Hey team, welcome to another episode of the Real Drug Talk podcast. My name is Jack Nagel and on this show we talk about all things alcohol, drugs, addiction and addiction recovery. Before we jump into the show with Chloe Power, she was an awesome guest, never shared her story before, first time sharing it out loud on a podcast or in media for, in a media format. Um, so we're really thankful to have her on the show. It was an awesome episode. Hope you get heaps out of it. But before we jump into that, I wanted to tell you about a brand new online course that we have out called The Wholeness Shift, where we teach you how to beat addictive patterns without going to rehab. So if that's of interest to you and you want to do some self-healing, you're not interested in the traditional options of counseling and um, rehabs and all that sort of stuff, um, this might be for you. There's self-paced videos heaps of stuff on everything that you need to know on how to beat addiction, um, along with group coaching and a private support community that you can access as well. So um, heaps of stuff jam-packed in there to help people get recovery and make some changes. Um, and we take a unique and different approach. So again, if you're looking for something that's a little bit different, um, this might be for you. Um, go and check it out. Links will be below. Um, and without further ado, let's jump into the episode and I'll shut up. Um, Peace, see you in the episode. Boom, welcome everybody to another episode of Real Drug Talk. Um, I'm excited today because we're back from a long break uh, and also got an old friend of mine on the show um, who I'm looking forward to hearing her story. Uh, so we got Chloe Power on. Um, how are you, dude? What's happening? Great, great to see you, Jack. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for coming on. Now, have you done much of this stuff before, like sharing your story and, and stuff like that, like on a forum like this, or is this kind of a new no, this venture? Is new. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, we, we thank we thank you heaps for coming on and sharing it. And it's something that we're trying to do with social media these days. You can kind of tend to go around with like the same people and the same like stories and stuff. So um, we appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. So Let's jump straight into it because I've fucked Chloe around this morning. Um, I'm <laughs> nearly half an hour late. <laughs> um, so I won't, I won't waste any more of the time. Just give us the three-minute elevator pitch of your story. Um, tell, us, tell us like how it, how it started, where it went to and where it is now um, in three minutes and then we can vibe from there. You don't have to stick to three minutes, by the way. Yeah, I'm like, I'm a chat up. <laughs> I'll try my best. Uh, yes, yeah, so I guess um, the short story is uh, from a very young age, I was, I guess, a bit confused with life and felt yep. kind of overwhelmed all the time, um, heightened emotions um, and a lot of worry, a lot of anxiety. Uh, and for the first time in my life, when I was about 12, I tried uh, alcohol and weed and um, <clears throat> straight away I could just feel pain relief basically. And it opened up a lot of doors for me that I had previously not been able to access like socialising, a freedom to be relaxed and be I guess playful uh and it gave me happiness um yeah for a long time uh so yeah it, it relieved me of my pain before it inflicted me with pain yeah what are you gonna say <laughs> were you aware of that at the time that no. that's what it was doing yeah okay no okay. i just was like oh, this is me now this is my identity i fit in here these are my people um yeah. very quickly it snowballed though uh because the pain uh was so great that it i just needed more 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 and sought out more stronger drugs yeah yeah uh, yep. and then by the time i was 18 i remember this a conscious thought this shit isn't working for me anymore i need to find <laughs> something stronger wow. and yeah and at um yeah at 18 i found an old friend that i knew used to um use heroin intravenously yeah. and i remember him looking at me in a way that i might be able to manipulate him so i contacted him and manipulated him to um help me with using drugs intravenously yeah. at that time it was speed uh and immediately i was like 
this is this is everything um and i battled that for um many years uh and between the age of like 18 to 31 so i would have a couple of years of going really well of quitting things going to uni uh you know getting into a relationship that was semi successful um saving money traveling and then something would happen and i would go back to using so i would have cycles of like one year two years two years three years on and off of um yeah, trying to keep my head above water, but the same anxiety was always there and the drugs yeah. and alcohol always gave me the relief. Yeah. So then uh, at age um, 31, I was then I was intravenously using methamphetamines. Yeah. Uh, and I my whole life had fallen apart. I was, you know, I lost my job. I uh, was, um, my boyfriend left me. I was living at home. I had nothing i didn't have a car i didn't have anything at all yeah Uh, and i was very aware that i was in trouble Mm -hmm. and did not know how to solve it so i reached out to a few people that at the time honestly were probably sick and fucking tired of my behavior so i didn't get the help from the people that i needed at that time and tried my darndest to do it on my own centrelink psychologists um i did a geographical um i had these plans of like buying a car with the money that i got from centrelink and i would just go in the bush and kind of detox that way had all these harebrained ideas while still using ice intravenously every other day of the week so I was just in absolute struggle street. It was the worst time. Um, And then eventually just reached out to a family member that I knew would listen to me and said, look, it's either rehab or death for me. All I see is just, yeah, a darkness. I, I can't get away from it. So then, uh, yeah, went to That's rehab. That's pretty extreme, huh? <laughs> It was really hard. I was super super confused because I'd never tried to quit before. (laughs) You know, I didn't realize I had no control over it. Um, Yeah. But yeah, so then, yeah, went to rehab uh, and uh, it was a 12 step based rehab in Melbourne. um, And it was amazing. I was gifted with this willingness and I did all of the things and got recovery and I was completely clean for three years. Um, That was in 2000. Yeah. And so um, in 2018, I relapsed, um, thought that I would be able to drink and very quickly things snowballed and I ended up very quickly in the same place. And over the last, um, yeah, however many years that is, I've had again, kind of like a similar cycle where I would have a year of going well, on a year of not going going well, um, not struggling with the same addiction like intravenous drug use, but using other things and not treating the pain. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, now I'm back on uh, the completely substance free train. Yeah. Um, which I have. Yeah. Over the past couple of years, I would have substance free pockets and then but yeah i've decided indefinitely you know i can't just smoke weed i can't just drink alcohol i've decided to take everything away i just operate better so i guess yeah yeah, that was definitely not three minutes (laughs) awesome no so much i'm going to ask you about as well that's perfect so um for me i'm always interested like going right back to the start how do you go from like i imagine you're just like smoking drugs or take or taking pills or whatever like, was it scary for you the first time or the first couple of times, you know, like shooting up and using in that way? Or were you just like down in the adventure of the whole thing going, this is awesome and cool and, or not awesome and cool, but like, this is, this is fun and exciting and this is kind of what I want to do. Um, so it wasn't scary for you. Great question. And I'm really glad you asked that as well, because I look back at little me and I yep. just think, you poor girl. I honestly just wanted to die. Uh, I wanted to get out of this, what felt like excruciating emotional and physical pain that I was in. Yeah. So I just, honestly, I just, I just threw caution to the wind. I was never afraid ever. Yeah. Don't you think you kind of like when you're hanging out in those circles as well, 
like when maybe when you first start doing it, it seems really that some of those things seem really out there and extreme. But the more that you like spend time around it, the more it kind of becomes normalized in your head as well. Um, and it doesn't seem like such a big thing anymore because there is people around doing it and stuff like that. That's what happened to me. Um, but I'm always interested in hearing people's experience because, yeah, I remember the first time I did it, I wasn't like, I wasn't like, I, I was a little bit nervous, but I wasn't like, I wasn't like freaking out like I would have maybe when I first started using drugs and I was thinking, oh, needles, holy shit, you know, that's that's full on, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting also a lot of people when I share my story with them, they're like, oh, weren't you just hanging out possibly with the wrong people? Not for me. So for me, I was isolated all the time. I was so afraid of harming other people with my behaviour. Mostly all of my drug use pre-2018 was of my own accord i yeah. always kept away from other people i didn't very much yeah take drugs with other people it was basically just getting on going home shooting up and reorganizing every part of my house yeah on my own yeah yeah it, it <laughs> i don't know i just was never afraid because i yeah i just wanted to die <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Can I ask, it's it's maybe a little bit like too intimate, but what's that like when you're in that space where you just want to die? Like what's kind of going on? Is is there is it just like thoughts and stuff or is or do you just feel sad all the time or yeah, like yes. mm, scared, overwhelmed, just dr like dripping in shame. Um yeah, like now that I know the science behind it and it's the physical is is everything. It wasn't my it wasn't ever my psychology. It was always my physiology that I had to look at. Yeah. Um, my dopamine level, my dopamine base level was always so high. Um, my nervous system, um, like you know, the hot seat of my nervous system, you know, in my brain was or was overwhelmed from a very young age. So my default settings were just fucked basically. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, that controls my heart rate, my temperature, my um, everything. So if I'm feeling physical pain, that translates into anxiety, depression. Yeah. So, yeah. That's really interesting. So, so you kind of have connected and, and see the base of your problem in that, you know, in your, in your in the physical i can't say that word um in your physiology i'm not even physiology. gonna try to say it. that's <laughs> that's the one that i'm trying to say yeah because because most people say the opposite these days when you talk to them most people say oh it's like rooted heavily in the emotional and stuff like that um i don't disagree with that so for me um i grew up in a in an environment that i felt unsafe most of the time yeah yeah so that would and i was so i also believe in genetic well not believe in but so there was a test done with rats and yeah. a rat was given a um a shock with rosemary next to it 13 yeah. generations later this rat is smelling rosemary and still having an anxious reaction so yeah. my family grew up in war-torn germany nazi germany fled over here in 1947 i'm second generation only yeah um and i and then i was really sick as a child so i just the hot seat of my nervous system was sent unsafe unsafe alarm bells yeah. all the time so yeah. it's definitely my emotions but that translated into how my body and and you know the, the way that I even scan the world, I, I'm I'm constantly looking for danger because yeah. that's just my default setting. And like, yeah, if I treat my physiology, my, just for me, my psychology will follow. Interesting. No, it's it's very interesting, and I think that's like a relief to people as well to hear that um, because. So, like it can be scary or, or it was for me anyway going in and then people are like talking about all this stuff that you're going to have to unpack and work on and <laughs> deal with and tackle which you kind of do in some respects but like yeah. it's 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 a lot to think about but if someone says to you hey just work on your physiology you know physiology 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 <laughs> <laughs> um i'm You'll gonna get, get some emails yeah. about that um <laughs> then 
then, you know, things can kind of come back to equilibrium a little bit. Um, I think that's pretty freeing for people to hear. So that's interesting. So do you it connect with like that? So sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I, I just agreed. It was freeing for me. And that's not to say that I don't treat my emotional at all. Like I do lots of directly uh, intentional, direct self-love. Yep. Like I have an internal uh, dialogue. I have an internal uh, judge, if you will, parent, if you will, that's quite critical and punitive by nature. Yep. So I just have to be aware, like, no, thank you. That's not the truth. Actually, I love you. I love you. You are safe. I yeah. definitely, yeah, recognise that love has to be directed f towards my body energetically yeah. as well. Yeah. So do you really connect with, like, the stuff that Gabor Mate talks about and things like that? very much so yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah there you go awesome awesome um so there's that whole side of it and then you go to rehab what's rehab like sorry i missed all of that you froze can you repeat that oh that's all right we dis we disappeared into the um zoom universe the black hole there <laughs> um so yeah you had all that experience and then you go to rehab what what's rehab like well uh my particular rehab was beautiful I went to a women's only it was out in the bush it was like a beautiful homestead uh and for me because I was willing I didn't feel did you hear all of that or was it because you froze for a bit yep okay great Got um up. so I was really willing yeah so I I I was just like everything give it to me give it to me so for me I was honestly I grew up like I just felt like a teenager that was um, finding her way, you know, I found um, people finally that I could like, oh my God, friends, how exciting. Um, and looking back, I was a bit psychotically happy. And for anyone that knows me watching this, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just so incredibly relieved to be out of isolation. Um, and I had been a rebel before. So like I just did everything so I, um there was um cbt sorry cognitive behavioral therapy there was a psychologist group therapy um na meetings narcotics anonymous meetings every day there was um reflective exercises through narcotics anonymous which is the step work that you do uh acupuncture yoga bushwalking uh no sugar no coffee it was was that hard really... no sugar um, no coffee for me, it wasn't because um, when I was mentioning my cycles of like going really well and then not going well, one of my cycles, um, well, uh, you know, they included when I would go into the good cycle, I would be completely obsessed with health and exercise. Yeah. Uh, so I just took to that like a duck to water. It was fine. Like I was the first one up in the morning putting my runners on, you know, <laughs> I was annoying like morning and everyone's like, fuck off. <laughs> so yeah yeah awesome awesome um so what's like just to give people an insight um because not a lot of people talk about it i think and there's a whole i don't know if you call it stigma but a whole kind of narrative that goes along with rehab um and that kind of frightens people off like what's what's like group therapy like or what what are the sessions actually like when you're in them? Are they intense? Are they difficult? Or are they kind of laid back? Yeah, how do they roll? I think it's different for everybody. Um, and I, I definitely uh, know that anyone that struggles with, um, with addiction struggles with connection because that's the opposite of addiction, yeah. So this connection to other people and vulnerability can be very overwhelming for anyone. Yeah let alone someone that is, you know, avoided it intensely for their whole lives. Um, yeah. For me, yeah, I found it really hard, really overwhelming, um, but it was incredibly beautiful. Um, so what, one of the sessions I'll just um, quickly mention, uh, one of the sessions was really simple. Hey, let's write down um, what your life would look like if you keep going the way that you're going. Okay, where are you yeah. going to end up? I'm going to end up in jail. I'm going to end up in hospital. I'm going to end up broke. I'm going to, you know. Okay, so what would your life look like if you, 
if you took to recovery and you chose all the all the, the this new path you've been invited to um, to join. Oh, and and just the, the excitement of that, like very simple exercises. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. It, it's really like that's what I found. What you're saying is so true, and that's what I found with like addiction is you kind of. I don't know, like it kind of tricks you and you get you get the blinkers on and you can't see the bigger picture. So those like reflective practices are really helpful, aren't they? Because it just like tunes you into what is actually happening. I did a similar one when I was in rehab. I remember, I think it was just because I was so like vulnerable at the time, but we had to like write down all the things that were important to us. And then like we had to like um, screw them up into like balls of paper and then um the the teacher or the counselor or whatever like made us like throw them away one by one and they're just like the action of like throwing away the things that were important to me if i kept like using i don't know it just broke me and you know made me cry but like really simple things like that that just like get you in the feels <laughs> yeah um and you don't need you. much when you're in that space do you like you don't need much to yeah. <laughs> to to break you <laughs> Yeah, 100%. I cried all the time. I mean, I kind of still do, but in rehab, I just cried all the time. I was so grateful and so happy. Yeah, and could see a future for the first time in my life. Like, people ask me sometimes, you know, what did you want to be when you grow up? Like, what did you think you were going to do? And I'm like, fuck, I actually never thought that far because I just assumed I'd be dead. Yeah. Like, I just never thought I had a future or potential or capabilities. Like, I just thought I was so dumb and doomed <laughs> yeah which yeah. is sad really interesting really interesting so you've spoken a lot about na so far and how that's been important to you what like what's what what's been your experience of it how you know how's it worked for you mm -hmm. great question thank you um yeah so when i first came i as I said, I just took to everything. Um, so I was just like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> Psychotically happy, you know, at meetings, um, welcoming everybody, wanting to do all the things, kind of annoying looking back. Um, but yeah, so my experience was just always positive, always reflective. It gave me things that I had never even considered before. And it's all basically free or at least affordable, you know, like yeah. you, they ask you for donations. You can donate 10 cents per meeting if you so wish. They give you a sponsor, which I, for anyone that's watching, that's like a mentor for yeah. free um, because they got a free mentor. So they just give away you know, what is, um, what was given to them. The, it, it was amazing. It gave me everything I ever needed. Oh, you just froze for a second. Did you say something? Then? Yeah. Sorry. We dis <laughs> we disappeared into the zoom universe again. So, yeah. so yeah. So you got a mentor, you like, sounds like you really became a part of like the community. Um, like people talk about the steps and stuff like that. Like what, what are the steps? How do they work? Um, you know, like, do you, do you follow them? Are they like actions or is there like exercises that you do? Yeah. Like how does all that work? Because lots of people talk about like 12 step programs, but mm. I feel like there's not a lot of like it explained on what it is and how people can access it, you know? Agreed. Yeah. So, uh, the book work, the step work, you know, the going through the 12 steps, 12 step program. Uh, there's books that you purchase. Um, and I'm sure if you can't afford them, someone, a member will be very happy to help you out with it. Uh, and they are questions uh, about you. They're just self reflection. So the first question is, what does the disease of addiction mean to you? And I mean, this is interesting because the like the disease concept actually isn't spoken about very much in meetings. Yeah. Um, but uh, because of the dopamine um, that w that is uh, released so in such high doses for such a long period of time through drug use, that's what makes it a disease. Because the baseline, like a, a, you know, someone that doesn't struggle with that or hasn't struggled with that their baseline might be down here yeah 
But for someone that has had a massive drug addiction, and for me, meth the addiction, my baseline was like I cut like wet, like it was above my house. Oh. Uh, so and for such a long time, so everything felt boring, and I would crave. The cravings were so strong because of that. So that's why it's a disease. That's why it's a brain disease. Um, but yeah, so the yeah the the questions are just really simple questions. They're about you which is everyone's favorite thing um so yeah Yeah. Uh, and yeah you go to meetings you you share listen um get a sponsor which is a mentor and they will discuss what their expectations are of you and vice versa um and what's the other one oh doing service um so that's like the four pillars of the narcotics or any 12-step program so doing service would can be just sharing in a meeting um or um or as far as you know to be part of the the world committee where you organize things and yeah it's fully self-supporting so we negotiate everything it's not um run by the government or anything so yeah 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 interesting um no it is it is an interesting concept and really kind of breaks down those barriers for people um that have problems with institutions and stuff as well. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah. So how do you go? I've just got to, I've got to ask a question. How do you go with like the spiritual side of the program? Um, You know, it's not a religious program. It's, it's spiritual, but there is like, you know, old school wording and stuff like that, that can put people off. How do you, how do you deal with all that? (laughs) Fucking pisses me off. Why is it always him? (laughs) <laughs> you know, like <laughs> as we put our trust in him, there's so much work. There's so much stuff. Like um, I actually, I like I didn't stay clean. Yeah. I relapsed in 2018 and then like went really well and then struggled and then went really well and like not with my drug, my original drug. And I never, ever returned back to like any sort of circumstance. You know, I've always had a good job, car, all that stuff. Yeah. Um but internally, you know, I would still kind of feel anxious and then use and then make decisions that I didn't I didn't like, right? So um, when I came back to NA, um, which yeah. I have uh, come back like nine months ago, I didn't have that same willingness. And I was sitting in meetings like, oh, my God, like I disagree with this, I disagree with that, this is bullshit, blah, blah, blah. But I realized that I actually am a fucking adult and I need to realize that it's okay just because I don't like one thing. Like if I go to the gym and I don't use the weights, it doesn't mean the whole concept of the gym is gone. I can still like go to a dance class or go do yoga. Like I take what I want and I leave the rest. Yeah. And for me, that constant reminding that, you know, people are share the same story and I'm not alone and getting vulnerable and being seen and seeing other people and accessing my softness really works for me yeah and I don't yeah yeah, I don't I I do struggle with the language a lot though like I'm I'm always like when we say the serenity prayer I say goddess instead of god and when I read out that 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 those words I always change him to their or or theirs um so yeah yeah. No, it's interesting. And I like how you explained it that, you know, you can, as you said, be an adult and make a decision about um, deciding not to, you know, take on the whole kit and caboodle and not throw the baby out with the bathwater type thing um, and and just focus on what's working for you. So what, what about rehab and the 12-step stuff and all the healing things that you've done? What what's kind of worked the most for you in your personal experience? Like what's been the thing that's helped um, mm. the most, would you say? Um, just a second though, my my I need to plug in my computer now. All good, all good, plug it in. <laughs> hey, this is how we roll. Sec- Thank you. Oh, and I just wanted to speak on the God thing. That's right. So, um, yeah, you with um, with Narcotics Anonymous, yeah, I know that they, they use the word God a lot. Um, yeah. But, that, you know, there are atheists in the program because, as I said, you can take what you want and leave the rest. For me, um, I have always kind of had like a little bit of a connection to something anyway, so it was really easy for me to to um, to access. But um, yeah. So what what worked for me the most? 
Yeah, there's really no one single thing. Yeah. Um, I think I really had to look at it. Yeah, I guess actually the the most freeing thing has been what we've been talking about, the physiology, not the psychology, because it's very easy to go, it's because my mum did this or my dad did this or or it's because I'm horrible. It's because, you know, my fault, me, 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 shame, shame, shame. Yeah. Um, and go in that spiral of like making it very personal. I'm broken. I'm different. Um, but yeah, the, the single most thing is just looking at my, you know, my diet, my sleep, my exercise, um, my connection to others, which is a very, um, very strong need because I got to remember that's the opposite of, of addiction. But yeah, like cold therapy, looking at dopamine, looking at my nervous system, um, and and I guess mindfulness. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to be yeah. in the now. Yeah. It sounds like this concept of things that help you to have this like reflective practice have been really important um and and things that help you to i guess like reconnect with the bigger picture or you know get your nervous system as you said like back into equilibrium and and again focusing on the bigger picture have been really important and all the things that you've done have been like tools to help you to get back to that space it's um it's, it's really interesting. And as I said, it's important because, you know, like people say, do the work, do the work, do the work. And I always am sitting there listening to it going, what, what the fuck is the work? What are you talking about? What is it? Um, so it's good to just kind of like unpack it a little bit, um, and, and go there. I I wanted to ask you if I can about, you know, because it's a part of a lot of people's story. Like you mentioned that you relapsed a couple of times. Yeah. What's, what's that like? How do you, how does it feel when it, when it, for you, how did it feel when it happened? You know, um, wow. yeah. yeah. Where, where does so, your head go? Oh, geez. Because I had a taste of how capable and, and amazing and like I could have everything, you know, all this hope that I'd never had before when I went back to it, it was incredibly um, scary. Yeah and shameful and it was really hard for me to yeah like I just thought I can do this on my own I didn't want to go back to um, Narcotics Anonymous because I didn't want to say I'm one day clean again and I didn't I just felt really stupid and um yeah full of I guess ego um and when I came back I was really defensive um, I was really defensive. Um, don't fucking treat me like a newcomer. I know what I'm doing. Don't fucking tell me what to do. Don't like molly coddle me, whatever it's called. <sighs> I just, I, I was very like, fuck off cunt. I know what I'm doing. Sorry for the words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> probably... that's fine. Um, I drop them all the time. It's okay. Okay, good. And over time, I, I, I just, yeah, I, I just, and it's really cliche. They keep saying, you know, in Narcotics Anonymous, keep coming back. And I just knew that I just had to put one foot in front of the other. And eventually that armor would come off and I would soften. And not only did that happen, I, you know, I was not the girl that I was before this psychotically happy, you know, everything kind of run, run, run person I softened and I calmed down and I stopped being defensive if people tried to help me I would just see it yeah it was just I I feel like I'm bigger and badder and stronger now because of my my experience with relapse yeah yeah awesome so it sounds like coming back was really hard though um and you had to dig deep to to find the tickets to to get back Yeah. yeah um And you mentioned, I think it's interesting as well, you mentioned before that it wasn't necessarily um, like the sun is just, I've sat in the worst spot. The sun is just hitting me (laughs) right in the face. I look look You might disappear soon, yeah. That's right. Um, uh, You mentioned before that it like, it wasn't necessarily with the same drugs or like, if I can say in a way, like not as bad as when you first came to recovery. Correct. Was that a bit of it like wasn't a trick? That bad at all. Yeah. Oh, 
100% because, um, you know, I'd always been in the health and wellness space, you know, so I could give up for a month or two and I could have a good life, you know, like a good job, you know, beautiful living situation, a community of gorgeous friends, money in the bank, like all of that stuff, Um, Mm. you know, and I would drink or I would smoke weed or I would do ketamine or whatever it was, yeah? yeah, and I would think like, it'll be fine. But slowly, I always ended up in that same space of like, Chloe, you know, you can be better than this. You know, that there's a better way to live. And yeah, it it was hard because as I said, my my using before was really isolated. It was horrible. But now my my using, you know, my using of substance became fun. And I was having these beautiful connective experiences and like creatives and, and beautiful, like it was just so different. And it opened up a whole nother world to me that I didn't know. Yeah. So I wanted to fit in as well. Yeah. But now I, yeah, I, I'm, I, I just go substance free. I still like suck up that vibe. Yeah. Um, but I, I just have a better time now without substance, which is crazy Yeah. compared to the way I used to think. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think like all those experiences are almost like, I don't mean it like this, but they almost like had to happen to kind of get you to the place where you are now and you know, living with that freedom? A million trillion percent. Yeah. Like I just know that, you know, struggling with addiction or whatever, that my life is way better without substance. And I do have to talk a little bit actually about the difference between men and women. Yeah. So men have 24 hour cycles and hormones. Men have testosterone only. They get it in the morning. And it, and it depletes as the day goes by. Women have three hormones yeah. throughout a 28-day cycle. So I was finding my use of substance and the way that I treated myself had to be, like, really different. So recovery for women or, or not women but people with a cycle is way different to recovery for a man. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I won't talk too much about that. But it's really, it really affected my cycle, my substance use, even just a little bit of alcohol. And it would send me into like, yeah, horrible PMS and then kind of almost manic ovulation periods. Um, And that's all corrected now because I've taken all of that out. I think it's like, I'm not one to be able to talk about it because I'm obviously not a woman. I mean, you're married though. You're, you're, (laughs) you you know, you're around someone with a cycle. Yeah. But like, I always remember talking to this, um, this lady who I really like as well. She's been on the podcast. Her name's Jenny Valentish. I talk about this all the time for people listening, but she's got a really interesting book called women of substance. I think that's what it's called anyway. Sorry if it's not something like that. Um, but yeah, you know, it's about this whole kind of thing about the differences. Um, I guess in more from like that story point of view of like male and females as well. You know, like, and I don't know if you relate to this, but when it got pointed out to me, I definitely like realized, and I was like, oh wow, um, uh, this is this is like something that I think does happen. You know, like when the guys kind of come into recovery, a lot of like the carnage that happen in their life can be sort of like you know it's sort of like can be made to seem like cool like in you know like gangster kind of stuff things like that whereas <laughs> you know maybe some of the things that might occur like with substance use with women is kind of by society considered more shameful and stuff and it just and it makes it harder for women to actually find recovery cuz you automatically kind of put in that shaming position like did you find any of that stuff happening or Mm. did you feel like that at all I I don't know if that's a thing but yeah yeah, I just think it's a really interesting point that is interesting I never really realized that but I mean it's not just in recovery I guess that's just the way the world is built um unfortunately you know um yeah yeah we live in 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 a in a patriarchy and that's just the way it is um unfortunately that's why I mean, currently I run women's circles and I run uh, womb reclamation half day retreats. um, And I'm very uh, passionate about educating women, you know, because the world that we live in 
doesn't really educate us about our bleed or our even just the science behind it the hormones that we um that we have released in our body um each month and how we are actually just designed differently and the world is just you know it's designed by uh, you know designed to live by the cycle of, of, of a man yeah and you know it's not anyone's fault you know that i'm not pointing any fingers not saying there's no one's fault but it, we've inherited this world and this is how it is and um it's gradually changing we just need to educate people more but there there's always going to be shame um attached to anything that's feminine um and 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 <laughs> an absence of shame attached to anything that's masculine so yeah. yes <laughs> yeah yeah it's interesting it's interesting um uh and what's recovery like like what what's what's some of the good stuff you know i think we kind of focus on you know what happens negatively a lot but yeah like tell us about some of the good stuff that's happened um for you in in recovery wow like i have things that i just never thought that i would have and i've done things that i never thought i've traveled so much uh i you know i have just things that people think oh well duh like you know i have a car now that's that's good and it's comprehensively insured <laughs> you know i have health insurance i have um it's such a i'm, a, I'm reliable <laughs> i'm loving kind you know i have savings that sort of stuff i guess is is the stuff that people mostly um focus on you know the outside stuff i have a good job i you know i'm uh, i'm running a business of my own um i mean it's quite small and starting up but you know it's something that i love um my relationships with my family are so different to what they used to be you know my mum will actually give me her credit card details these days wow. <laughs> if i need <laughs> you know um look honestly i just have so much I'm a, I, I'm not who I thought I was ever going to be. I yeah. don't suffer anxiety or fear. I live in faith and love and trust, which is an absolute fucking miracle. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Amazing. Um, hey, well, thanks for coming on. Um, it's uh, been a pleasure to hear your story. And I think it's going to be helpful because we kind of got into the weeds a little bit with some of the stuff about rehab and, all that now really cliche question but mm. like what do you tell people that uh like thinking about recovery or thinking about rehab or just thinking about making those first steps like what's the sort of words of wisdom or advice that you give people um yeah i don't know like it's really different for everybody i think honestly for me your first port of call would be going to narcotics anonymous meeting only because it's accessible and it's free and you won't feel stupid. There's yeah. other people there. You'll hear your story and it will break something in you. For me, I needed to look at information. So like YouTube videos, I needed to like just fucking find out what's happening. Um, and it depends on your family situation. Tell someone you trust, period. Tell someone you trust. Um, and I guess my words of wisdom are, if you have that gift of willingness, everything's going to be okay. It doesn't yep. matter how long it takes. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Just be soft and kind and and it'll be okay if you want it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, mate. Awesome. Hey, thanks again for coming on. Um, where can people find um, your womb healing stuff if they want to uh, oh, cool. engage thanks. in some of that? <laughs> Well, I'm in Western Australia, guys, uh, and nothing that I do is online for the moment. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you can just follow me on Instagram. That's probably uh, the easiest way because I've got a website under construction and I've got a link tree. Um, but, yeah, so it's Chloe underscore underscore power. Um, but, yeah, if you've got any questions at all about anything, if you're struggling, please DM me. That's totally fine. Thanks so much for um having me. No worries. It was a pleasure. And we'll put all that in the description, all right, so people will be able to click and find awesome. you easily. Um, and there's plenty of people that listen that are in Western Australia as well. So cool. um, awesome, guys. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day and peace.